Mr. Munjal Shah. He is one of the promoters of Paris Defense and Space Technology. Presently, he occupies the position of Managing Director, CEO, and Director at Paris Low Form Engineering Limited and Managing Director and Director at Paris Defense and Space Technologies Limited. Mr. Shah is also on the board of five other companies. Paris Defense and Space Technologies is, has a wide range of products and solutions to offer for defense and space applications. With over 40 years of sustained business growth in the area of defense and space engineering, they are involved in technologies for rockets and missiles, space and space research, naval systems, land and armored vehicles, electronic warfare and surveillance, electromagnetic shielding, to name a few. Paris has a state-of-art manufacturing setup with 600 plus workforce and having capabilities to offer a turnkey solution from designing to commissioning of large to small systems. Their focus on technology development and research and development distinguishes them as a true IDDM company in Indian defense industry. By IDDM, I mean indigenously, man indigenously designed, developed, and manufactured. That's a big thing for us, sir. For India, it is a big thing for India. Friends, these are some interesting times going on in the The demand for defense is growing in India in this sector in a very big way. Government of India has changed the automatic route limit for FDI in defense sector to 74%. It has also opened the defense industry for private sector participation to provide an impetus to indigenous manufacturing. Now, let me pause here and just hear some, some things right from the horse's mouth. So, give a big round of applause to Mr. Munjal Shah of Paris Defense. Sir, as requested by you, let us start this session with a video. Anjali, can you please play the video?
So that was highly impressive, sir. And we are happy to know that you are making Thank India you. proud in such a crucial sector, sir. So welcome Thank to our you. forum, sir. So to take Thank this you. session forward, I invite my committee member Jyoti Burlia to come up to take the question answer session. Jyoti. Thank you, Preeti. Good afternoon, sirs. So, uh, uh, Mr. Shah, I would like to know, first of all, that uh, 74% FDI in defense sector. So do you see this as an opportunity or a challenge? Uh, you know, it is a, a great thing that now uh, our government has increased the FDI limit. Okay. Because here, uh, the Indian company is the biggest beneficiary. Uh, you know, the foreign companies earlier were reluctant to come into India and offer things uh, uh, like made in India. Because they would say, like, why would we come here with our uh, know-how and then we uh, give uh, most of it to a company who is holding the majority shareholding. Prior to this, it was 49. Okay. So now with 74, they feel that they will be able to get the maximum shareholding and uh, able to have still control over the company and the IP. And uh, the Indian company anyways, uh, with 26% also has nothing to lose. He was anyways not going to get business. So now with this, he gets started. And you know, with this, uh, like there are a lot of other advantages, like the business comes into India. So yes. they will be looking at a lot of Indian content. Uh, you know, like today, the minimum Indian content is 50%. Uh, so you have to have 50% of the value to come from Indian manufacturers. So this company would have to then subcontract to Indian companies for at least 50% of uh, its value or maybe more, 50, 60, 70. Nowadays, some contracts also want maybe up to 70% Indian content. So it is a great thing. By now, by, with this now, the foreign companies come into India, they are more happy. They still So they are able to still control the company. They're able to control the IP. And also they retain uh, the majority profit. And the Indian company has nothing to lose. He is uh, probably, uh, in, like some people would be just lending the name, the infrastructure and their uh, capacities, a little bit of capabilities and uh, still get 26% and back to back, probably out of the 50% Indian content that would be coming into India, maybe his company only would be doing 25%. So it's a great thing and we really thank the government uh, for taking such uh, initiatives and uh, also keep on, you know, bettering it. Uh, so, sir, do you think that uh, with this kind of a collaboration, a kind of a IP transfer is going to happen uh, to the Indian companies? Will it uh, actually happen? Yes. Uh, say when you are doing 50% uh, Indian content minimum, so 50% of the IP is already here. Okay. Sir. And then, uh, you know, slowly, slowly it goes to 60, 70. And when the trust develops between the foreign partner and the Indian partner, then for sure he would like to have more and more uh, content from India so that he can make it more competitive and probably he can have more value addition for whatever he's doing. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah. So, uh, so... Uh, you know, like uh, once, uh, you know, you have 50% uh, of the Indian content that is done in India. And then uh, as like time passes and you have like, you know, the foreign partner would be wanting to like get more and more. And there will be a time when he will, he would probably do maximum manufacturing or maximum content from India so that he's, so that he becomes more competitive and probably he's able to sell more and probably look at India as a manufacturing hub for his other markets. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, sir, uh, before we continue further, we would like a small keynote speech from you regarding Paris defense. Okay. Yes. So, uh, I am uh, Munjal Shah, you know, as you know. So, yes. I started working for Paris uh, 25 years back at the age of 20. Uh, when I joined, uh, this, is, uh, this company was started by my father. He still is the chairman of the company. We were less than 20 people and uh, revenue of also less than 20 lakhs uh, total. And then, um, so I started working uh, very early with him. Uh, actually, I started working at the age of 19 plus, about 20 okay. full time. And okay, then, uh, so we start as a mechanical manufacturing company. We make mechanical parts. And then after I joined, we want to explore more. Uh, so we start doing bigger mechanical parts. And then uh, one, like in 10 years time, you know, after like you having, uh, moving around in the sector and also uh, learning on, on, on the way, 
uh, probably started doing like uh, very big uh, mechanical parts and probably some uh, machines. Then we make some money and uh, we okay. want to again uh, put the money back into our business. You know, we have always believed like uh, our our business is where we should be investing because that is where um, we know where where is the money deployed and how it is deployed. <laughs> yes, sir. And if we lose it, also it is we who have lost it. So you know, we will not feel uh, so bad. Like uh, we would be like you know, we can write it off maybe in some time. But if somebody else has lost our money, then uh, it will be like really uh, right, you know we yeah. we will we'll remember it a little longer. So then uh, we we made some money and then uh, we decide to explore uh, new areas like which is going to be future and where we probably uh, could be uh, the early ones. And so we invested into a facility for manufacturing of camera lenses, mainly for night vision devices and for space cameras. Mm -hmm. So we uh, were the first ones to set up uh, a nanotechnology uh, based machining center. So like manufacturing center, deploying nanotechnology. And then, uh, so after we deployed this, uh, like after we started, we invested in this, uh, it took us about a couple of years to settle because India didn't have the know-how, how to uh, make parts or how to make it happen. And uh, so, but finally, after uh, like uh, putting a lot of efforts and also looking at maybe some international help, uh, we were able to uh, set this right. And we became the first uh, professional manufacturer for uh, camera lenses for night vision devices. And then today we are uh, India's uh, number one and uh, you know we are the most preferred company for all the OEMs. Uh, then we want to do more, you know, like we always want to uh, try more forward integration. Uh, and then so we started doing a little bit of backward integration. So we started doing designing of optics, so camera lenses. So we started doing designing of camera lenses and then putting it together into uh, a lens uh, and then offering it as our own design product. Then we became again here also market leaders. We want to do more and also want to ensure that we have no clash of interest with any of our existing customers. So then we decide to build complete systems where our customers are not working. So then we look at uh, areas where it's uh, like being imported uh, and also very, very challenging. So a uh, couple of opportunities or a couple of uh, activities or a couple of systems that we are working on. I will just give you examples. So we are building. Uh, periscope for a submarine so you know submarine the eyes of the submarine uh, is a periscope so we yes. are building periscope for submarine application uh, complete turnkey basis so everything uh, that is going to go into making of the uh, periscope is uh, paras defense then we are also working with our uh, defense uh, organization for uh, building and deploying a camera into the space to look down so you you building a camera with them and uh, I, the launch is also going to be this year only most probably and you I, and the camera gets deployed at a distance of about maybe uh, five to six hundred kilometers and from there it is doing imaging with very high resolution and uh, so this is one of uh, the other areas and then also some more uh, areas where we have no clash of interest with any of our existing customers so besides that then we also uh, are into defense electronics. We built a lot of uh, electronic products by ourselves. Uh, so we started with uh, maybe building of you know small boxes uh, with some electronics inside, and now today we do complete control system for various applications, mainly for army and for navy. Then we also again uh, make some more money. So we want to, and always we try to explore what else. Even if we have no money, we, we <laughs> people we have money and we want to explore. Now we have, but before uh, we. <laughs> Uh, I would not say that, uh, but we would like we would always encourage people. Like we would, you know, always we would be moving around. We would not sit in the factory and then uh, stay in the factory and just like look after the manufacturing. For that we have people, and uh, yes, you know, yeah. our job is to look uh, around and also to explore what more we can probably bring to the company. So we mm -hmm. always explore, meet people, even if you are on the other side, and if we find you like really. Uh, like you know having great knowledge and probably we could make um, much more on um, betting on you or maybe uh, maybe like you know we could make more value add by having you here on this side uh, we would then uh, explore that possibility so we would say okay let us do something together and then uh, so this way we got into drone and uh, anti-drone business mm -hmm. so today uh, we are working uh, we and so today in a very very short time we are offering the widest range of uh, drone and drone based uh, application or services in the country and we created that in in two years time and uh, now hopefully uh, we will start seeing um, reasonably 
um, like you know good returns or reasonably good uh, outcome for all the efforts that the company has put in. And also now uh, we are working on anti drone. You know wherever there is going to be drone, there is going to be anti drone. Anti drone probably if you just uh, I will tell you like you know wherever you have a drone, uh, you know it's uh, some sometimes it's good, but sometimes also it can be you know like uh, it can be a challenge. So to uh, protect ourselves against this kind of a challenge, you have an anti drone solution. And uh, anti drone solution is much more technology product uh, than a drone. You know drone can be built today by anyone. But anti drone is a very very high tech product, and uh, we now offer or we are working on anti drone solutions also. And uh, we believe that we are going to be able to do a lot in anti drone. You know, in our presentation, if you have uh, seen a, a slide where we probably claim that we are going to be India's number one anti drone company. Yes. Sir. So we are working on very unique anti drone solutions, uh, maybe for a uh, distance of 1.5 kilometer or maybe and beyond. And also low cost. You know, right now these all most of the anti drone solutions that India has are being imported. Uh, we have uh, a very few indigenous systems, and and also whatever we have, they are all very bulky and also very expensive. So we are working on building very very state of the art and also uh, very very cost effective. And market is going to be huge because it's not only for defense and on the borders, but it's going to be for civilian sector also. Like uh, example, airports. Uh, seaports, uh, maybe oil refineries, uh, all strategic installations of our country, strategic buildings of our country, yes. uh, maybe uh, like a great uh, possibility. So then we are also into anti-drone and uh, and besides that we keep on still exploring. So every day we will explore. Like So right now before I uh, came on this VC, uh, I finished exploring possibility of quantum communication. You know, quantum communication is something okay. very, very uh, new and very high tech. So uh, same way, found someone very good on the other side. So we said, let's do, let's do it together. And today is the time when everybody should uh, work together in order to make a solution for the country. It's not of like course, you're yeah. on that side or you're on this side, but built a solution for our country and also built it within our country and also at the most uh, economic in the most economic way. Yes. So uh, this is about our journey, and we have a very big team. Um, my, our core team is all like a similar age group uh, and uh, we all work uh, very hard for the company. Um, we try like so our, so our priority in life is our company. If our company is in place, every, everyone will be in place, uh, including family. So uh, we work uh, like, you know, companies above everything. And also we try to balance our life. It's not that, you know, we will just end up uh, sitting in the company all day or maybe just roaming around for the company. So uh, uh, this is in short and also have a good team, good infrastructure and and also now uh, before earlier times you would invest into maybe setting up of factories or maybe setting up of maybe more equipments. But today now we invest into people. So now yes, like sir. going forward integration and uh, I think more investment in people and uh, maybe the other already uh, we have to great extent. So this is about our company and our journey till date. Thank you, sir. Very interesting insight about your thoughts and about your visions. Sir, I would like to call upon Vasundra for her question now. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask on the macro level, uh, how do you see the defense sector manufacturing in India for the world in the coming decade, sir? It's been so much in the spotlight, the defense sector. See, India, the best part of India is, uh, you know, knowledge at very, very low cost. Now China is also uh, getting expensive and also you know, China is not uh, like a country where people would like to maybe do something uh, for the global level. Uh, maybe for commercial products, okay, but not for uh, strategic products. So uh, very few options and India is the place uh, where they have themselves uh, within the country a great demand. So it is like, uh, you know, uh, you do a dual uh, possibilities like one is a business within India itself which is very huge so you already uh, have a local business which on which you start off with and also because of the low cost and also you know India our people like we work six six days minimum a week and then also we work long hours and also we uh, say like you know we are very very flexible and also very adaptive so I think uh, India will be a global manufacturing hub for the defense uh in the coming times and and it, it has already started uh it is only a matter of now few more years and like you know after 
maybe say uh, say we are we are in 23 when we talk in 25 we will be quite a bit but maybe by 2030 so for sure uh, we will be really a, a global hub for manufacturing thank you sir rashmi jawar you can come in uh, good afternoon sir so yes. when we hear about any defense equipment in the uh, in our defense equipment it is the monopoly of 10 20 or 30 people worldwide and I thought that without collaborating with these giants, no factory can run or grow and sustain in India. Sir, can you throw some light on this, please? So, uh, 10, 20, 30 is too much for some very high-tech products, maybe less than that. <laughs> okay. uh, yes. But now, uh, see, with the government uh, making a mandatory uh, made in India, you know, first is now... Uh, you could be maybe the world's number one, but if you don't have an uh, Indian company to front end, uh, you are uh, you, you cannot even participate. So now, the say, the minimum requirement is an Indian company should be front ending, except okay. if, if it is like something like government to government uh, obligation. But yeah. Otherwise, now normal course, it is an Indian company which has to front end. And then second, the minimum content that is like done in India is 50%. Okay, now okay. the minimum content required is 50%. So the foreign company, uh, if he wants to do business in India, he has to come to India and he has to tie up with someone and he has to uh, make someone his partner and give him 50% commitment uh, of work. And also he will not be front-ending it. Front-ending, even though he, if he wants to, it has it will be done by an Indian company. Okay. So, so this way... Uh, you know, if you want to do business in India, you will have to pass on this knowledge and you will have to like uh, follow these uh, requirements. Otherwise, uh, there are, as you said, 10, 20, 30, there are other people also and uh, they will be for sure interested. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> Pooja Garwal of uh, New Alipo. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Sir, Hello. Defense PSU have been promoting private-public partnership to ensure speedier execution and also enhance the synergies from the indigenous capabilities. So mm -hmm. could you share your view and the way forward for this, please? So today, uh, as we said, we are working for the country. We are not working for each other. So it is more on the country level now. And the government is uh, really pushing everyone very hard to make partnerships. So PSUs have been told to look at private companies to partner with uh, DRDOs, like, you know, uh, Defense Research and Development Organization, which is the uh, main uh, starting point for anything that you would like to do in India and defense indigenously. They also now look at private companies uh, to offer their uh, technologies or maybe look at partnering with them. So now it is like uh, it has become open where the government uh, directly is looking at private people or private companies to partner with. Um, could be also small, medium, large. It is not that they will only go to larger companies sometimes because in larger companies, it takes time for decision making. So they also know that it is better to tie up with maybe medium-sized companies uh, where the decision making probably will have, happen faster. Or small companies who are really, really uh, very, very technology sound and they are not very, very, uh, say, uh, they're not expensive. So they could look at that also. And also defense PSUs now because they want to, uh, say, first is now they want more Indian content. So that is why they have to look at private companies where they could improve their Indian content and meet the guidelines or meet the requirements. And also uh, together, they would like to now see how they can build a larger solution for the country. So there are a lot of partnerships happening. In fact, now there is Aero India, uh, which is at Bangalore. You know, we have two major shows uh, for defense in India. One is the Def Expo and the second is Aero India. So Aero India takes off at Bangalore 13th of February. 13th, uh, second half, you can go and 14, 15, 16, 14, 15, 16, 17 for general public, it will be a lot of uh, very, very busy. So in this, in this Aero India, there are going to be probably more than, uh, we, we, uh, we understand there are going to be more than 50, 100 partnerships that are going to be announced. So all time high partnerships and partnership with anyone. Now it's not that only the big guy partners with a big guy. It is big guy partnering with anyone in order to make it possible and in order to make it happen. So a lot of partnerships happening uh, across the country and uh, within, say, foreign company and Indian company, a PSU to a private company, a government of India undertaking to a, a private company. So a lot of possibilities opening up. Thank you, sir. All the best. Thank you. Shweta Singhal. Uh, good afternoon, sir. 
sir uh, we in millennium mans are inclined towards agriculture how will drone work out in india where farmers have small land holdings and they cannot afford to buy one will renting the drone work for them and how so you know this question is about the agro sector but i would love to because i am making agro drones sorry just kidding <laughs> so uh you know we are also uh, working on agro drones and uh, we should get our uh, first agro drone certified uh, probably in this month and then we start selling it uh, to the open market uh it is going to be mandatory now that the spraying uh, will become uh, like you know right now mostly is manual across the country government is working on like you know uh, taking off the manual spraying and the, the other option is spraying by drones okay so first is like it is going to be it is going to become mandatory second it is going to be also csr cost government wants to save the life of the person who is spraying you know what is the average uh, life of a, of the person who is spraying his average life is 40 so you can imagine how many people uh, in our country annually would be probably having this uh, you know they would be probably uh, having this challenge so government is making it mandatory because they also want to reduce this uh, happening and also uh, if you spray using a drones it's going to, it is cheaper when the farmer is spraying uh, manually probably consumes more it's not evenly sprayed and uh, probably the cost of spraying is uh, maybe about 50% more than what it is cost by using a drone and also he doesn't need to invest there are uh, pesticide companies who are basically having a model where instead of selling pesticides uh, pesticides only they will come and also probably spray it for you so the bigger people will be investing into it and they will be having that big volume they will be probably having the entire maybe uh, the village or maybe the town or maybe uh, maybe quite a bit of uh, area that they would be uh, tying up with and then they would go and do the spraying as and when required and also along with that uh, you know you can do spraying much faster say today you okay. you do spraying by drone uh if you use uh, an indian drone uh, for spraying in uh, probably 8 hours you could do maybe about 30 acres okay which is uh, impossible to buy manually so uh, mm-hmm. the spraying or the use of uh, drones in the agriculture is going to be very very extensive in the coming times and it is going to help uh, first is uh, reduce the risk to the person who is spraying and second it is going to be more economic and it is going to be um it like across you will find consistency in whatever you do so uh, uh, this is uh, like what is the future for agro drones and people who are um, building agro drones or offering agro drone um, like or offering services uh, for spraying a drone based mm-hmm. they will have quite a bit of business you know our country is uh, very big for agriculture so quite a, bi- a lot of business will be existing for everyone so you are the leader in the agro drone sector no 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 i am still not uh, i wish to be and uh, so we working on maybe doing like larger agro drones you know right now the most common is uh, doing 10 liter uh, drone and we are at, and uh, you know there are like uh, about maybe five or six people who have already got certifications and there will be there would be another maybe at least five or six more uh, in the line uh, to get or maybe maybe uh maybe tens of people because the market is very big but we to get started with okay we will be like selling this 10 liter but our goal is to do uh spraying for a much larger area at a time so we are also in parallel working with a high capacity uh that is could be maybe about 25 liter drone with uh, you know longer battery life right now the battery is a big challenge you you fly it for 30 minutes and then you have to like bring it down change the battery and all that so with uh, you know longer duration of flying and with more capacity of spraying is what we are working on so maybe in the next uh, year or so we probably would have something uh, like this also ready and then could be uh, possibly that we would have a, a little bit bigger market share but not the leader for sure like thank not the leader not but not the leader here yeah. thank you so much sir megna yes sir last year the government introduced the pli is so the public production linked incentive scheme for uh, manufacturing of drone and drone components yes so has paris defense uh, benefited from it sir yes so uh, so we have been benefiting from the beginning when it is announced we have got benefit then when we have uh, produced we have got uh, benefited so yes uh, paris defense also is part of the pli scheme okay sir thank you priti agarwal sir uh, 
So this year in the budget, there was quite a lump sum, quite an outlay for the artificial intelligence, sir. The government is very bullish on this part. Sir, I want to understand or rather know from you, sir, how how much do how much of artificial intelligence do you use in your company and have you benefited from the budget outlay? So artificial intelligence is uh, like an add-on to whatever you are doing. Okay. So example, like uh, we are now, uh, say example, we are producing a submarine periscope. Okay. So in the periscope, uh, we can add on one more feature that is an AI feature. It's a software. Okay. So it will have a small piece of hardware and then, uh, but more of software. So artificial intelligence is going to be in every system or most of the systems that the people are working on. It can be maybe for maybe a smaller handheld camera also. It could be for maybe other, say it could be even for drones, like, you know, drone-based uh, surveillance. You have AI, uh, in uh, like, you know, AI also part of it. And then this way, probably you are able to have uh, more better, uh, say, accuracies or you are able to maybe uh, have your solution probably deployed to the fullest. So AI is now an add-on module to whatever one is doing. And it is going to become mandatory because with AI, you make your life more easier. And also you are able to use the system or the product more efficiently and probably get better outcomes. So AI is going to be mostly a part of everything that the person has been doing and it will be like an add-on. Okay. So have you benefited from the budget outlay? So we are, uh, we have been benefiting from the time like, uh, you know, they have started Make in India, Made in India. So it's, uh, say that is... Say like the benefit is already there and uh, with this new, like, you know, in this budget, they have also, again, uh, uh, it's it's got better only and also it's going to be more capital goods that they will be procuring. But also Make in India is already benefiting everyone. So probably say today, if you ask me, we are pretty busy. In fact, uh, we have, uh, we are fully sold out also to great extent. So, uh, you know, budgets will come, but you know, the, the, the number of companies that India has for the uh, outlay that they have for these capital uh, products is much higher. So we have lesser companies and we have more, uh, more products that the government or the more value that the government wants to consume. Right companies I'm talking about. Okay. Uh -huh. So uh, the business will always be there. And in fact, uh, it will keep on growing um, budget. Yes, of course, uh, because now we need to also make our country more stronger. We have uh, a lot of uh, and guidelines are coming up where they are talking of, uh, like, you know, where we are. Uh, from 49 to uh, 74 and also uh, like very high Indian content now minimum requirement or a guideline for any uh, business that you want to do in India. So all this is really helping the sector to a very great extent. Thank you, sir. So uh, when you say that uh, the government is supporting through the budgetary uh, allowances, so what is the entry barrier in this sector? We see very limited companies in this sector. Say so this, uh, say defense business is a defense is a business where if you want to really uh, you know sustain or if you really want very very focused or uh, someone who wants to do it has to be very focused. So first is like he cannot be having like multiple businesses that I would I would put 20% time here and 20 elsewhere and elsewhere. So first is like uh, if you are here 100% and uh, also then uh, you are uh, say it's a process. Okay. So uh, how do you like if somebody wants to get started? Okay. So he start looking at the tenders. First is he has to have the have the basic of uh, maybe manufacturing or whatever he wants to do. And then he can start looking at the tender and then he gets, uh, maybe he, he wins some tender. He has to get himself registered also to uh, add few places and he wins the tender. Then he starts to produce and then after that he delivers and uh, he's uh, made his uh, mark there that he has been able to deliver. And then you have again uh, the next possibility 
so in the beginning it takes time because you know defense business is not that you put up uh, you you put some machines and you start to sell next day there is a process you have to follow and you have to stay put you have to be there uh, yourself physically to very great extent and also uh, some patience also and some sustenance but once you are there then there is uh, no looking back and then you will have enough uh, and you don't have to worry what happens to the economy or what happens to the world your business will, will always go on okay. so yes in the beginning it takes time but if you are uh, focused and if you are like really trying hard then it will happen more faster and uh, just a little bit of sustenance is what we have to factor in like you know it sometimes it could take maybe some more time than what we have when we start but some some uh, maybe sustenance and after that uh, for sure uh, we are in business and then probably it's uh, no look, no looking back thank you sir krishma hi good afternoon sir oh uh, sir i have a very different question my question mm-hmm. is sir that with a combination of ai tech and drone sir do you think unmanned warships would be an area of opportunities or an area of interest everything unmanned is now the future they don't want people to go and uh, you know it's unmanned so so exactly there are there'll be less contingency so so is this a possibility yeah yeah so there is a lot of uh, opportunity right now for unmanned you know drone is an unmanned like mostly you know you yeah but mind. you can't shoot with the drone right so you know you can shoot with a drone you can probably you can go and capture another drone with a drone you can probably oh. create a you can create a blast with a drone there are so many applications and that is why you will need to install an anti drone because what if somebody has put a maybe explosive on a drone and is coming towards you so you have okay. to also, so a drone it is not only going to be only for surveillance or transportation no drone has a lot of other uh, applications that is maybe putting up uh, maybe uh, putting a small explosive and going and probably creating a big impact or maybe weaponized drones where you can go and you can do that whatever you said and then come back so uh, drone based uh, applications are too many same way uh, so now coming back yes. to your question unmanned so uh, people are looking at more and more unmanned solutions right now you know you have like big aircraft for surveillance so you call it yes, a drone yes, they are like they are like they are aircraft which can fly at very high altitude you are talking of they flying at 30000 feet flying at flying up to 50000 feet and staying in uh, up there for maybe a couple of days or maybe more than a couple of days and then doing the complete surveillance and flying long distance and also that is also yes unmanned. sir yeah unmanned yes sir so same way when we have unmanned aerial uh, uh, great opportunities it there are uh, there is also great opportunity for unmanned uh, in the water like you know unmanned boats unmanned also small subs they are talking of unmanned uh, submarines okay right sir so a lot of application where unmanned is now um, being explored and uh, and and it will be in the future most of most of it will be unmanned only okay thank you sir sushila so, jain uh, sir my question is that how will paris defense and space technology meet the overall order pipeline in defense industry segments so uh, you know uh, we are uh, not even 1% of whatever the uh, uh, budget is for the uh, for capital products um so uh, see our goal is to grow year on year by double digit uh, percentage and uh, for that we always uh, plan in advance like say today we are creating more infrastructure uh, adding more people and also uh, investing and exploring uh, technologies that revolve around whatever we are doing and it can be like an add on so uh, by investing in uh, people and investing into some infrastructure because you know when you are going to be making something more you would need more space for maybe either stocking it or either assembling it or either maybe uh, like you know set, uh, like sending it out from and uh, so here if you are growing by double digit uh, it's a good thing and i think uh, every company not just paras defense but people who have been here long time and who have invested here and have some it or some uh, specialization they will all continue to grow and uh, they will for sure most of them will have a double digit growth thank you just bees uh good afternoon sir 
Uh, sir, the defense sector seems to be growing at a very large scale, and the global industry is likely to grow at a compounding rate of 5.8%. How is Paris Defense poised to uh, participate in this opportunity? So, as uh, I mentioned, you know, we keep on investing in new technologies, um, which is add on of whatever we are doing. Example, uh, say we are now working on anti drone solution. An anti drone solution will consist of a camera, will consist of a radar, will consist of, will consist of a jammer, will consist of a uh, maybe if you want to bring down the drone by shooting it, then you have a laser weapon system. So, all these things, uh, whatever go into making of a full solution, like they're also uh, developing a few jammers. Uh, radar technologies also, we do a lot of electronics for radar, so we understand that and we just need to go a little bit forward integration and make it happen. So, um, like, you no, know, as, as we mentioned, that we keep on exploring uh, every day. And, you know, it's not that we invested by exploring uh, doesn't mean investing. Uh, you can explore every moment uh, with everyone. So we keep on exploring, uh, and I think uh, we have a very, very good team. My colleagues, uh, you know, uh, not all of them are here today. Um, they all having something else to do, but uh, very, very uh, like proactively every day in the in the interest of how we can offer more and more, or how we can have more and more add-ons to already what we are doing. So I think we should be able to uh, uh, do well. And also with uh, now, uh, say the most, the biggest advantage to us is like, you know, we started our career building parts. Then after 10 years, we put it in a box and we make a package. Then after 10 years, we make it a complete uh, product. So because we have all that all, all still with us, like it, it still continues making parts and uh, we now package it and now we make a full solution. So all that uh, uh, leaves maximum value addition for our company. And also, um, maybe we can, our turnaround time is also very fast because having most of it uh, within our own uh, house, we are probably able to turn it around more faster. So I think uh, we should be able to uh, do reasonably well and should be able to live up to the expectations of everyone. That's good to know. Thank you, sir. Shalini? Shalini? Uh, please mute. Yeah. Uh, Shalini, you can come in with your question. Oh uh, yes. Uh, sir, my PLI question got answered already. But if you if you can throw a little more light on how exactly the PLI scheme for Paris um, aerospace help, that would be nice. And it was also lovely to see that Paris is empowered by women. That slide was really nice to see. Very extent, like quite a bit uh, of, and we also promote uh, to very great extent. I have two daughters. Um, both my daughter uh, are uh, like the younger one is uh, now going to US and pursue engineering, and elder one already pursuing engineering, uh, second year, second semester. So uh, uh, you know that is how we uh, wish that uh, because they may probably also be a part of this since they are doing science and they also doing what is uh, our main line of business, focusing on that uh, from from this age uh, and from now and uh, hopefully they'll part, be a part of Paris very, very soon. So we always uh, support uh, and also encourage. In fact, uh, if there is someone who really wants to do, uh, like wants to do something in life, we will encourage uh, uh, to th them to a very great extent. Like, you know, if someone, like example, a woman or a girl says, I'm an engineer, I want to do, uh, I want to do more. I want to prove to people that I have, like you know, I have done a, I have done the right thing by doing engineering. We will give them lot of uh, uh, possibilities. Like you know, the most easiest possibility is sending them to trade shows. You know, there are a lot of trade shows happening locally, and also uh, there are trade shows happening globally. Somebody says I want to really uh, do more, and I, I will really stay here a long time, and I will really. Uh, like I want to really uh, do something different and I want to like also, you know, sometimes they want to also show the, the family that they are really doing good. So uh, very simple is, uh, you know, give them exposure of trade shows. When you go to trade shows, you get so much knowledge. So if you want to do, if you want to just understand defense, you should go to uh, any of our good expo. Go to the expo, go to every stall, see what they're offering. You can discuss with them these days, you know, after COVID, there are less visitors and more exhibitors. So they will also give you more time. So, right, uh, 
So after, so this way, probably you get to know more about uh, and all this, uh, like, you know, slowly, slowly being around this and also thinking around this and working around this, probably you could uh, uh, add more value and grow faster. So we always support and uh, everyone, but of course, especially uh, if there's a, uh, someone who wants to like really do something uh, more and really wants to like uh, prove themselves, uh, uh, we will, uh, Paris events gives a lot of possibilities uh, and opportunities. And uh, as, at, as we spoke about the drone PLI scheme, so we are uh, trying to do more and more uh, development. And now we are awaiting outcomes of many products that we have uh, been able to develop uh, in the recent times. And uh, once we start uh, delivering, uh, or once we start getting larger orders for drones, which are now in the making for every drone company, every competent drone company in the country, uh, then we have uh, more uh, uh, collect, more to collect from the government. Right, sir. Uh, so my kids are going for the aero show in Bangalore. Wow, great. Great, yes. great, great. Very nice. Thank you. Yes. Vaishali. Uh, good afternoon, sir. I wanted to ask, um, the space tech economy has a vast potential to change the world. For this, we need cheaper launches and smaller satellites. So what role will Paris Defense have to play in this? So, uh, good, you know, I had not mentioned about the space sector. You made me uh, mention about it. it. It's good that you reminded me also. We are a part of each and every ISRO's optical mission could be for Earth observation, could be for interplanetary mission, or could be for science mission. Wherever there is camera, there is Paras defense. And most of the optics now, most of the camera lenses now into the Indian space programs uh, are from Paras defense. So either it is manufactured by the space organization themselves or Paras defense. So uh, we, uh, and also we are very, very competitive as compared to uh, all the foreign countries uh, manufacturers. We are, I think, very, very competitive. And also the launch vehicle of India is the cheapest. You know, ISRO claims that they are the cheapest uh, launching uh, place in the world uh, most of the time. So uh, India already is producing uh, uh, the launch vehicles at a very, very competitive price offering uh, also the uh, launch also at a very competitive price. That is why the foreign people come here for launch. Uh, sometimes if ISRO doesn't have a launch happening, then they will go to other uh, maybe companies like SpaceX or who have more probably frequent launches. But India already is producing very competitive launch vehicle. Also now uh, more and more compact uh, satellites or more and more compact solutions are also in the making because you know sending anything up uh, is very expensive and also uh, anything big is in the space is expensive. So uh, we are all working together. In, in fact, Paras Defense is also working on building a uh, compact solution for Earth observation. And maybe uh, in the coming times, uh, not too far away, we will also have our own uh, solution up in, up in the sky, looking down uh, uh, from a very long distance at a very, very uh, cost-effective price. Probably, I think uh, we could be probably the most competitive in the world. And why? Because again, I've, met, I've said in the past, like in uh, earlier conversation with somebody, that uh, most of the things that go into making of it is being done uh, by the company in-house. Unlike, unlike the many other companies who are only, or many of them are integrators, where they buy from different, different people and integrate. But we being the designer and also the manufacturer of most of the items that go inside of the, uh, maybe the camera or the satellite or the mission. Very competitive price. So I think uh, uh, India is, and uh, now in the coming times, we'll have a lot of uh, space uh, missions also being announced. Right now, uh, post COVID or during COVID, you know, like pre COVID, there were a lot of missions happening. Uh, in COVID, government said, let us fix the country or let, let us fix the people, uh, take, take care of them first. And then now, again, a uh, lot of uh, action at the in the space area also. And uh, coming times, uh, uh, as we know, like a lot of missions to be announced. And uh, India for sure will be also doing great in the space sector because a lot of uh, private companies coming in the area of space and also a lot of uh, government private partnerships and a lot of encouragement to them. Thank you, sir. 
Thank so you. So we'll take up a last question as we are nearing our end of session time. Uh, Renu Bhattar. Renu. Sir, my question is also related to space. Uh, both defense and space sector need a lot of R&D work. So are we only looking uh, like FDI has just come in? So previous to that, how much were we investing on R&D? And uh, currently also, are we looking at technology to be brought in by the FDI or we have our own in-house uh, R&D dependency also to a high extent? So India is great. India is doing mostly... Uh... Uh, quite a bit to its very uh, to a very great extent. So we are pioneers also in many many areas. But sometimes some new technologies uh, that are in the market where our country has still not started or taking maybe a little bit uh, maybe uh, easy steps because until now most of the R and D was happening at the government level. Uh, sometimes uh, it would take a little bit more time. Uh, so that time probably we would be looking at foreign companies. But in the coming times or the way right now, the partnerships are happening between everyone amongst each other and the way right now the motivation uh, is being given, like, you know, they are, uh, you know, the government also is committing that if you are able to develop this by yourself, uh, we will give you this much business at this price at a predetermined, predetermined price and also the volume. So a lot of R&D is also happening, uh, was, al was always happening a little bit, uh, maybe coming from outside. But we, because only the government organizations are doing uh, the R&D now with uh, private-public partnership, uh, we believe that uh, many, many things will be done locally and maybe in the coming times, uh, we would not have to have dependency on uh, on anyone outside for most of the things. Thank you. So just out, just what you said, uh, like there's a lot, uh, government gives us contract through predetermined prices. So... Uh, do, do we get affected by the price uh, changes in the raw materials due to the global scenarios? No, everybody in defense works at a little little better uh, number than otherwise in the other sectors. So uh, this sector can absorb uh, any uh, fluctuation, any normal fluctuation could be in the commodity, could, could be also in the foreign exchange. You know, this is the beauty of the sector that uh, you have a little bit more reasonable uh, value add as compared to anybody else because it's a technological sector. So uh, any uh, normal or maybe a little bit abnormal change into any of the factors uh, does not really affect anyone. There is uh, enough, maybe we will, we will take home less, but we will still take home. Thank you, sir. So now I would call upon Rashmi Jhavar to give a vote of thanks. Uh, good evening, Mr. Shah. Uh, I, Rashmi Chavar, thank you on behalf of the entire team of Millennium MAMS for your in invaluable time and meeting us on this forum, notwithstanding your busy schedule and enlightening us on India's most progressive defense engineering and 100% made in India company from concept to commissioning. Sir, what you said, build for our country and build within our country. Thank you so much, sir. With over 40 years of sustained business growth in areas of defense plus and space engineering, I would also like to take the opportunity to extend my heartfelt gratitude to our mentors, Mr. Bishnu Dhanuka and Mr. Sanjay Bhuania, for giving us such amazing opportunities month after month, year after year, for 30 plus years. Thank you once again, Mr. Shah, for your precious time. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>